to you with a camera. <laughs> I am nervous to talk about this. I think it's easy for me to be vulnerable because I know to truly love someone, you have to be vulnerable. And so the flip side of that is to grieve someone, you need to be vulnerable. I feel like because I have told my story and was so honest, I'm free. What comes to mind when you hear the word freedom or liberty? The feeling of running through an empty field, crisp air filling your lungs. No matter which way you view freedom, we all strive to feel it from within. To me, the feeling of freedom always begins by seeing a mirage, the thirst for something that seems unattainable. You reach a point that makes you think you should have found it by now, but that's what keeps you wondering. When you are vulnerable with someone and when you are so honest, you always feel free because it always feels like that weight on your shoulder has been lifted. I think there's more to life than being unkind or disloyal or selfish. Wanting or tolerating one-sided friendships, relationships. Taking sides when you don't know the full story or taking sides in general. Don't just be kind because someone might be going through something. You don't need an excuse for kindness. Just be kind. Life isn't about being hard on yourself either. I'm not perfect, none of us are. I have made so many mistakes <laughs> and I regret a lot of things. And I look back on my past experiences and think to myself, I could have done that so much more differently and had probably a more positive outcome. This person could still be in my life if I had said X, Y, Z instead. If I had done something else instead. If you know you made a mistake, don't dwell on it. Just apologize or just try to talk to them. If they don't want to accept your apology, that's different. But I think it's always important to forgive yourself. We need to go through those things and learn from our mistakes to make us into better people. Because if you don't know any better, you just, you, you can't expect yourself to know exactly what to do. There's no guide. There's no step-by-step -step for relationships or friendships. <laughs> that would be amazing, actually. Maybe that'll be my third book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you don't believe, you can do it. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will save you. No one will do the work for you. Only you can. So. The way you adapt your language to others, you need to start changing that language to yourself too. You slowly question what it is you're doing wrong, how you could do things differently, feeling as though you're being misled by your dire thirst. But that's what freedom is to me. It's fighting for what you know you deserve because you know no one will just give it to you. It's realizing that every negative thing that happens is actually a positive because it builds resilience and changes you for the better. It forces you to reevaluate your self-worth. It forces you to show people how you expect to be treated. I, for one, would rather be rejected than lied to. If it hurts, it just means your ego is bruised, but after some time, you realize that you should be grateful for their honesty because it didn't waste your time. Chasing your purpose also forces you to do similar to consider your fears and ask yourself what it really is that you are afraid of. You need to be vulnerable with other people to love and accept love. It is important to put yourself first, but in relationships, it's also important to recognize other people's feelings and the way you're behaving. When you're going through a difficulty, you always think you're the only one experiencing that pain. It's not until time passes, you gain perspective, that makes you realize we all carry a form of pain. It's just up to us how we want to communicate that with one another whether it will be used to make or break a relationship. Understanding the importance of communication. Hey, you did this, it made me feel that way. Regardless if you are the one saying that to someone or hearing someone say that to you, you need to recognize the importance of that person's vulnerability with you. Yes, writing about my experiences is cathartic, but I also express myself and my experiences so openly so that others can recognize it and see for themselves whether it's something that they want in their lives. Keep moving forward, even when that mirage disappears. The more you try, the closer you'll get to reality and the more abundantly your thirst will be quenched. Your capacity for many things will grow along with your fortitude. 
be the one who is so fiercely themselves that after a while, people know exactly how to treat you. People know you're not to be fucked with. Look at people who matter the most to you. Look at the qualities that you want to keep in your life. Find people who have those similar traits. Eventually there will be a line other people will cross and it's up to you whether you want to accept that, move the line further ahead to suit them or draw it in concrete and not accept anything less. You control the shit that comes into your life and it took me some time to realize that. I have only been in love twice. I can comfortably admit that I feel indifference toward the first person, but I love me. A few people actually say to me, I'm so glad that you haven't written about me. To me, it's not about hurting other people. It's just about expressing my hurt and my healing through that, because this is the way I know how I can deal with that. If other people read it and want to interpret it in a certain way, I can't control that. I think I do hold back in my writing. The reason for that is because I love the mystery. I don't like giving away the whole story so easily. I like hiding it in symbolism that held meaning to the relationship or the experience that I'm writing about. And I think I also hold back to an extent because it could be irrelevant or too specific <laughs> and I don't want to give away who it's about. But I don't hold back with my vulnerability and my feelings. I think that's really important to express, especially with something that I want to help other people with. Like-minded people will naturally gravitate toward you, to share vulnerabilities, to encourage compassion, to grow together. Love yourself, and I mean every little bit. Embrace your strengths, see your flaws as growth. There's no shame in allowing people to see your vulnerability, especially when you know your vulnerability will help someone else just as much as it helps you. When I was going through something that was very difficult for me, I kind of shut down and I go silent. It's not because I don't care about the person, I just cocooned myself because I wanted to understand what I was feeling. Self-reflection to me is very important especially with trying to maintain relationships. It's not normal to be liked by absolutely everyone, so don't force it. Don't ignore the real truth just because you want your wishful thinking to be true. I think that was a hard pill for me to swallow because I want to see the best in others, but people will be bitter, people will hate, and they will try to hurt you. So just focus on yourself, don't seek revenge, Ignore that shit and let your life, your success, your happiness speak for itself. Don't just move on, but move forward. My journey to liberation was found by meeting myself and recognizing what I wanted from people in my life. He made me see that the road to follow your morals and beliefs can be very lonely. You just have to be okay with that. The only relationship you will always have for the rest of your life is the one with yourself. Do I want to be liked by people who do not respect my boundaries? Or do I want to be a supportive daughter to my parents who have cancer? Well... Going through these difficulties... It almost broke me seeing the very person you deemed the definition of strength going through something like that changes you. Realize the fear holding you back is something you need to release. And when you do, prepare yourself to feel how powerful your inner strength really is. That's when you'll feel free. People don't need to know what you're going through and you are in control of sharing with them the extent of which you want them to know. You don't need to share every detail of your life to the world, you don't need to make yourself seem any different than the person you are. Be authentic and don't just have an amazing life online, have an amazing life full stop and share that. Do things for other people who can't repay you, do things for others that 
people won't find out about. I also believe that we are never given anything that we can't handle or that we can't grow stronger from. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Not sure if I should talk to the camera or to you. Sounds like someone's dragging a dead body. There is there are <laughs> Let me just let me just did you understand what that meant? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um there are two sides to a story, and the only important one is mine. <laughs> I don't know what song that was. Okay. Hi, Natasha. You just texted me. <laughs> no, my battery's dying. Oh, shit. Oh my god, look at the sunset. There's no sunset here. Let me do that again. Life to me means... <laughs> I know what I wanted to say, I just forgot it. <laughs> Ask me again. <laughs> What does life mean to me? Ooh, a lot. <laughs> you should forgive, forgive yourself. <laughs> this fucking khara upstairs has been dragging what sounds like a fucking dead body for 10 minutes! 